are we online? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, sorry, there was a bit of a technical glitch there. That's why there was about five minutes delay in starting the afternoon session. So we will kick off with uh, Melanie giving us an update on Equip. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Melanie David Fevick and I manage the um, Epilepsy Quality Improvement Programme. Um, today I'm going to give you kind of like some highlights about the programme, um, some of the project interventions that the teams have completed and sort of like where we are now. So um, just out of curiosity, a raise of hands, who's heard of the EQIP? Oh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and those are lying if you just put a, a yes in the chat, that would be great. And Marnie will monitor that. Um, so uh, this slide just gives you a bit of background on the EQIP and why it was established. Um, it's sort of based on the results um, from the audit, the Epilepsy 12, where improvement with, uh, within various um, areas um, were not being achieved um, and it was a bit of stagnation um, happening. So we took the opportunity to explore um, how we could um, support um, teams and better understand the, the root cause um, of the issues and challenges um, that teams face presenting, um, preventing them from progressing. Um, so we worked in collaboration with um, a group of advisory um, epilepsy specialist nurses and Open UK leads um, to create a bespoke uh, program supporting epilepsy services uh, similar to the diabetes collaborative that the college also managed at the time. Um, the training is delivered um, by an external uh, QI trainer, um, RSPCH and DAS team, um, and um, links to epilepsy charities um, such as uh, Epilepsy Action and Young Epilepsy, um, who helped to facilitate um, the training as well. I really like this slide um, because it's been an absolute pleasure working with the teams over the years. Um, they've been through quite a lot of um, adversity because when we started in 2019, the pandemic happened in 2020, um, so they showed a lot of tenacity and enthusiasm to continue to progress um, their projects and even surprised themselves with some of the changes that they made um, and improved um, care that they was able to provide to their patients. So um, since the launch of the pilot uh, in 2019 to date, uh, we've um, seen a participation of about 40 NHS um, trusts um, in England and Wales, and including uh, two ICBs, and trained about 184 NHS members of staff within paediatric epilepsy um, services. Um, so our intention uh, is to build from the front line up, enabling uh, micro microsystem teams um, with the capability to lead and develop uh, their own improvement work with core skills in change program design, person-centred care, measurement of uh, improvement, team coaching and values-based practice. So we do this um, by assisting service staff uh, for future challenges, um, we, by offering a program that centrally support and embed quality improvement uh, methodology within um, paediatric epilepsy teams, grow skills, knowledge of teams to understand successful transformation and change um, at all levels um, in epilepsy services using a microsystem model embedded within local operational business. Um, so the use of those skills to build networks of improvers to deliver the priority areas of local services underpinning national NHS England and epilepsy care goes. So this, uh, this model is a equip improvement engine and timeline. That's a great way to illustrate an example of the basic structure and timeline of how we embed knowledge, 
um, support and skills to plan, measure, uh, monitor and execute the QI interventions through building capability. Um, over an eight month period, uh, teams will attend a one day training um, event uh, with subsequent monthly uh, live webinars backed by recorded videos, templates and resources uh, to refer to throughout the program, underpinned uh, by monthly one-to-one -one team coaching and support. Formative and summative assessments are a great way to assess uh, the team learning and progress by monthly reporting, review of local and national data, um, team one-to-one -one support and evaluation of lessons, uh, learnt after training sessions, um, reflection on their journey, um, and which also helps for teams to think about um, the programme beyond and how they tend to embed sustainability. Teams then showcase their learning and outcomes via a final project uh, of presentations and a project poster that is shared at the end of the programme. Um, and which is which we also um, open out to the wider epilepsy community. So these are sort of a, a list of themed um, topical areas that the teams have developed um, in terms of their project interventions over the last three waves. Um, and each project, uh, each presentation is on our um, website. Um, for each of the teams, um, and I think I may have loaded some up in the virtual booth. Um, so to give you an idea of the project interventions that the team um, have worked on, um, beginning with mental health. Uh, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the Warrington and Helton uh, Teaching Hospitals Trust, they're a, a small uh, DDH hospital who at first um, was going to improve the documentation of their uh, comprehensive care planning. But um, through, the, um, through the process of increasing um, patient engagement, um, whilst um, on the EQIP, they were able to engage children and young people who told them that their concerns um, was the fact that they didn't have mental health support and wanted to be able to um, have those concerns addressed. So they came up um, in terms of co-designing um, with the children, young people, um, linking in with um, local mental health services. We also gave them links um, to the team at uh, the, that run the MICE study at GOSH, and they were able to come up with this happy, strong, healthy mind support package um, that was distributed to patients um, during the EQIP and um, has been adopted, I think, also by other um, teams within their region. Um, during this process, they were also able to have successful conversations with their um, service management, which resulted in repurposing funds to appoint a children and young people's wellbeing practitioner. Um, so this is a Royal United Bath Hospital. And they decided to improve upon the disparity they found in the quality and uh, quality of care provided to their children and young people in epilepsy. Um, upon review of the Epilepsy 12 audit data uh, for cohort one, it was clear to them that this lack of consistency was impacting on patient care. So through diagnostic tools and process mapping, using leadership skills to increase engagement um, amongst colleagues to, cre to create buy-in of new processes, this team um, worked hard on improving their referral um, pathways and achieved a number of outcomes, which is on this slide. Um, and, and upon the review of their audit results, um, they were able to achieve uh, a percentage of children, young people diagnosed with epilepsy that had an input of, um, from a pediatrician with, ep with expertise increased from 72% in 2020 to 94% in 2021. An input from the ESN had increased from 80% in 2020 to 100% in 2021 and remained above national and regional averages. The percentage of children, young people that were seen by a pediatrician with epilepsy, um, with expertise in epilepsy within two weeks of first referral 
continued to increase from 22% in 2020 to 47% in 2021, um, above national average. Um, also within the uh, two week um, referral, uh, you will see the 16, sorry, plus 16 weeks referral. Um, in 2020, it was uh, 22%, which um, was decreased uh, to 6% in 2021. Sorry, the mouse wasn't working. <laughs> um, and then uh, Manchester uh, University, uh, they focused on their project improving quality um, and experience, uh, improving the quality and experience for patients and families attending ketogenic clinics. Families were uh, spending an average of two hours in clinic and complained about the long wait times, uh, which at times uh, would result in families feeling uh, leaving even before the investigations were completed, which impacted on patient care. Um, the clinics often ran behind and staff felt quite um, under pressure and overwhelmed um, in order to um, uh, run the, the clinics um, on time. Sorry, this mouse isn't working for me. <laughs> um, so um, what what we did with the uh, Manchester uh, University Trust was um, we went through again some process mapping with with them, um, really trying to work out and find out what the barriers were, um, finding out how we can break that break it down. In, ter in terms of incremental changes that they could make in order to achieve some of the service impact that you see on this slide, um, which is um, a reduced, where they reduced their appointment times by 29 minutes by introducing huddles um, before clinic in terms of preparation. Um, the time that they weighed was reduced by 50%, um, which was removed um, um, the wait time of the medic notes because um, they would have they were having to also deal with paper notes as well so they were using the electronic system which really reduced that time down for them um, the experience with, within the patient and um, families that um, increased in terms of being positive and was getting about 100 percent feedback in terms of the changes that they made um, that they were happy with that um, and the, the experience within the actual teams they were actually um, improved as well over this eight month period. So what did we learn from um, the participant teams over the last three years um, of training? And did we meet the aims of the program? Did we learn a lot, uh, which we did, and we won't be able to cover within this presentation. Um, but just to summarize, um, teams had a clear sense of purpose shared objectives and a plan of action with defined roles and responsibilities. Teams have established new ways of working and communication with their team members uh, using huddles. Teams had uh, an increase in terms of um, patient engagement where they weren't be able to, they didn't have the tools, techniques to be able to um, use those, use the, the skills in order to be able to co-design um, their co-design their um, co-design their product their um, project interventions um, they were able to do this um, with the help obviously with our, with the RCPCH and us and they were able to increase um, that by being able to feedback collect feedback analysis and action plan on all of those um, project interventions so this is some of also some of the um, quotes that we got back from the teams and um, as you can see, their confidence also increased in terms of the quality improvement tools. So we plan to present all these findings and lessons learned um, via an impact report and create um, case studies, um, team evidence and host it on the eQuip e website and share it much more widely. Um, and we definitely want to thank all the teams for participating in previous um, eQuip um, programs. So, Today, um, I just want to be able to let everyone know that we are going to be running another wave. 
Um, it's when it's going to be uh, funded by NHS England, CYP transformation team. Um, we uh, will be starting um, another year up until August 24. Um, training will start on Friday, the 20th of October. Um, and it will be a one day event within London. First time we'll be in London um, at the Royal Society of Medicine. Um, the deadline for applications is the uh, 9th of October. Um, and you can download the application forms from our website or you can um, download them from the virtual booth that we have as well. Um, so, thank you. <laughs> I've got one question from Melanie as well, if anyone has any burning questions. Is there anything online? Yeah, so um, sign off from your medical director or service lead. Um, and this year, um, for the next round, we're asking if you can include your ICD leads um, as well. It would be great if they can be included because they'll, they'll understand some of the barriers and challenges that teams are facing and they'll also know some of the successes of, of where it's happening. So therefore, they can use that in order to, to begin the journey of trying to reduce variation. Thank you. Thank you.